good morning everybody welcome back to my video classes the topic of today's discussion is chemo taxonomy or taxonomy in relation to phytochemistry or you can also say phytochemistry in relation to taxonomy these are the contents what we are going to talk about primary metabolites secondary metabolites conclusion and references now coming to chemo taxonomy chemo taxonomy is the science dealing with the classification of plants based on chemical constituents it is a science which uses chemical information as a character for taxonomic purposes before we analyze the basis of this modern trend in plant taxonomy let us for a moment think about the different kinds of plants in our daily lives when we drink tea or coffee we appreciate the flavor or aroma and differentiate the two by this character similarly when we eat fruits such as the mango the banana or an apple we find that they taste differently these differences are due to the chemical constituents of these foods and this forms the basis of chemo taxonomy where the chemical features or chemical constituents serve as the evidence for taxonomy the potential importance of chemical evidence in plant taxonomy has been suggested by both botanists and chemists and this has become an important recent trend especially because newer techniques for quick analysis of plant material have been developed chemo taxonomists suggest that chemical characters have a particularly high taxonomic value because they are stable unambiguous and not easily changeable further chemical characters will show chemical relationships amongst plants in the same way as morphological characters show morphological relationships although chemo taxonomy is considered to be a relatively recent development in modern taxonomy its origin can be traced to very early classical taxonomy you'll recall that the spice plants were identified on the basis of their aromatic properties or the medicinal plants by their curative value these aromatic properties or the curative value was largely based on the chemical constituents of the plants and taxonomists have classified them since ancient times using these chemical features along with morphological characters however it is only in recent years that chemo taxonomy as an important field of study has been established a review of the large amount of literature published in this field reveals that chemical data may be obtained from any part of the plant secondly depending on the purpose of investigation the chemical information may be used for description or identification of plants or for establishing relationships this evidence assumes greater significance when it is used to sort out differences in taxonomic relationships when two or more possibilities are suggested on the basis of morphological characters although theoretically all chemical constituents of a plant are potentially valuable to a taxonomist in practice some kinds of molecules are more useful than others thus we can use directly visible chemical constituents such as crystals raphides or starch grains occurring in different plants as chemical characters alternatively we can chemically analyze plant material for different chemical constituents and use this information for taxonomic purposes most chemo taxonomists recognize three broad categories of chemical compounds the primary metabolites the secondary metabolites and cementides as important taxonomically coming to the primary metabolites as the name indicates the primary metabolites are molecules involved in vital metabolic pathways they are of universal occurrence and not very significant in chemo taxonomy 
However, these molecules become useful as chemotaxonomic features when the quantity of such molecules varies considerably between taxa. Secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites or secondary plant products are those macromolecules that lack nitrogen and are of restricted occurrence and therefore of greater taxonomic importance than primary metabolites. This group includes different kinds of compounds such as flavonoids, terpenes, iridoids, alkaloids, anthocyanins, glucosinolates, cyanogenic glucosides, polyacetylenes, etc. They are usually not involved in vital functions and are largely storage products or pigments. Now, coming to one by one of the secondary metabolites, the flavonoids. First of all, the flavonoids. Amongst the secondary metabolites, flavonoids, which are the commonest phenolic compounds of leaves, have been very useful for chemotaxonomic purposes. Both monocots and dicots have been extensively surveyed for these compounds which show structural variability and chemical stability besides widespread distribution. They can rapidly be and easily be identified and provide important chemical characters for taxonomic purposes. For example, 80 species of plants from the family Almaceae were investigated for their flavonoid chemistry by Giannasi in 1978. Majority of the species contain flavonols, but a few species have glycoflavonols and these two types of flavonoid compounds are never present together in any species. Interestingly enough, in most classical systems of classification, the family Almaceae is divided into two subfamilies called Almoidae and Celtoidae, which are also distinguishable by the flavonoid chemistry. Therefore, morphological criteria combined with flavonoid dichotomy can be used to divide the family Almaceae into two distinct families. Family Almaceae is characterized by the presence of flavonols and family Celtaceae is characterized by the presence of glucoflavonols. Several other studies have used flavonoid chemistry for taxonomic purposes in families such as Arilidaceae, Cornaceae, Labiatae, Leguminosae, Orchidaceae, Rutaceae, Lemnaceae and others. Although useful in assessing relationship among closely related species, flavonoids are occasionally useful in assessing phylogenetic relationship at higher levels. These are the flavonoids. They appear only in vegetal food. They are substances that are aimed to give plants different functions. Protection from solar rays, predators, attraction or refusal, seed dispersion, etc. Once ingested, they attain medicinal properties. The medicinal properties are antioxidant, cardiotonic, capillary fragility, blood flow, reduced cholesterol, stomach protection, liver protection, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. These are the foods which have flavonoids. Next, coming to terpenes. A second group of secondary metabolites commonly examined by chemotaxonomists are the terpenes. Volatile terpenes are major components of essential oils, which are characteristics of the order magnoliales, ostrobaleales, piperales, and laurales. They are also reported in families Myrtaceae, Rutaceae, Apiaceae, Lamiaceae, Asteraceae. Chemically speaking, these compounds can be classified on the basis of their molecular structure into monoterpenes, diterpenes, triterpenes, sesquiterpenes, etc. And each group can be used for taxonomic purposes. For example, in the genus Salvia, 19 species could be distinctly identified and classified on the basis of their monoterpenes. 
the terpene composition was as useful as morphological characteristics in the analysis of introgression and hybridization within the genus this is a picture of the plants showing terpenes these are the different terpenes found in plants iridoids iridoids are 9 10 carbon monoterpenoid derivatives 9 to 10 carbon monoterpenoid derivatives they are commonly found in plants grouped as asterids alkaloids alkaloids are structurally diverse chemicals that are derived from amino acids or from mevalonic acid cocaine morphine codeine atropine colchicines quinines are some important alkaloid plant products the plant groups where they are biosynthesized represent a vast diversity hence of little systematic interest these are the plants which have different different alkaloids betalanes and anthocyanins betalanes are nitrogenous red and yellow pigments restricted to the order caryophyllales except the families caryophyllaceae and molybdenaceae anthocyanins in contrast are red yellow blue or purple pigments of most other plants betalanes and anthocyanins are mutually exclusive as they have never been found together in the same species these are some plants showing betalanes and anthocyanins red beets yellow beets amaranth bougainvillea cactus pears etc all these show betalanes and anthocyanins next coming to glucosinolates the glucosinolates are also known as mustard oil glucosides they are hydrolyzed by the enzymes known as myrosinases to yield pungent mustard oil they are characteristic of brassicaceae residaceae and tobaraceae so all these plants show glucosinolates the mustard family plants then coming to cyanogenic glycosides cyanogenic glycosides are defensive compounds that are hydrolyzed by various enzymes to release hydrogen cyanide the process cyanogenesis is widespread in angiosperms leucine derived cyanogenic glycosides is common in the families rosaceae fabaceae sapindaceae etc in the order magnoliales and laurels these compounds are derived from the amino acid tyrosine then the polyacetylenes polyacetylenes are a large group of non nitrogenous secondary metabolites they are formed by linking of acetate units via fatty acids taxonomically they are important because of their presence in related groups of asteroid families asteraceae apaceae campanulaceae caprifoliaceae etc so this is all about phytochemistry in relation to taxonomy based on the chemical constituents or chemical information the plants are classified chemical information is used as a character for taxonomic purposes and the we studied about the primary metabolites the secondary metabolites which are of greater taxonomic importance than primary metabolites and the secondary metabolites like flavonoids terpenes terpenoids iridoids alkaloids betalanes anthocyanins glucosinolates cyanogenic glycosides and lastly the polyacetylenes thank you